Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. I hope you're having an amazing day. The RTX 40 series has finally been announced by NVIDIA, and there are a ton of thoughts I have for the RTX 40 event. Lovelace looks very impressive in terms of raw performance numbers from what they've shown us. Some of the technology looks very cool. The LSS3 in particular looks very awesome. And the pricing of the RTX 4090 in particular wasn't as eye-watering as I was expected. With that said, there are a ton of caveats here. And what I want to do with this video is just give you guys a really quick overview of the announcement. Um, there are a number of questions we're still left with, both in terms of architecture, performance data, and other bits and pieces. So I'm sure I'll quickly do a follow-up video to this. But really fast, let's just talk about the raw stuff. The RTX 1490 is going to launch mid next month and it's going to cost you 1599 us dollars for the 24 gigabyte spec we've discussed the specifications ad nauseum before so i don't want to spend too long on this i'll discuss the performance information in just a moment because there are several asterisks here when it comes to the performance the 30 sorry the 4080 12 gigabyte is going to cost 899 and well you can see how much the 16 gigabyte model is going to cost I think we can all agree that the 4080 cards are more expensive than perhaps we expected. I personally expected 999 for the 16 gigabyte model, and I expected perhaps a little more expensive for the 4090. So, swings and roundabouts, eh? Now, there were a lot of announcements in terms of what the architecture is capable of. Far more than what I can go through in this video, because again, I just want to give you guys a brief overview of the, uh, of the announcement, but mostly focus on my thoughts and opinions of it. Speaking generally, though, there were some really cool things, like shader execution reordering. This uh, basically is a major innovation for Lovelace. Essentially, when it comes to the execution of operations on a GPU, obviously they are let's just say capable of executing a lot of instructions simultaneously but the order uh, because of the massive parallel design of a gpu the order of execution is extremely important and what this basically does is allow the gpu on the fly to change the order of an instruction so for example an instruction that it received later on could be held back because of a more pressing instruction that's just come through this essentially allows ray tracing to be sped up significantly just because of the way that code diverges with ray tracing so you could be looking at a 25 percent increase in uh, frame rate just from that alone and in terms of ray tracing performance that can be significantly higher like two times faster um, so that's really impressive. Furthermore, there were other things that were announced like DLSS 3. Now, from what we can understand based so far on the official announcements, DLSS 3 essentially will only work on RTX 40 cards. Now, whether this can be modded or something like that for RTX 30 and below, I do not know. However, according to NVIDIA's blog post, it basically seems like this is specifically for RTX 40 cards and above. So I assume Black, uh, Blackwell will also be uh, able to function on this. So what it basically does with DLSS2, of course, you up sample from a lower resolution image, 1440p, uh, to 4k using a previous frame of animation machine learning yada 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 we've discussed this a billion times before so i'm not going to go too much into it but with dlss3 it essentially does a lot more this is really cool stuff actually and in my personal opinion is possibly one of the best features of rtx 40 because essentially what it does is it actually creates a new frame of animation so it basically inserts a frame now you can see from uh nvidia's own numbers and of course again that's with an asterisk how well this works in reality i don't know but uh, basically it can make a huge difference in performance for example you can look at how microsoft flight simulator unity e enemies demo cyberpunk uh, portal warhammer and so on and so on all benefit with dlss technologies uh, again they have announced that there are 35 games you can see a list on screen yourself i'm not going to go through all of them but some of them are pretty big titles and there are also updates coming to currently released games for example cyberpunk is getting an update hitman is getting an update you guys get the idea so that's pretty cool um this, however, does mean that it's a really big feature that RTX 40 benefits from, 
And second point is that it also means that certain games which do not leverage these features, well, obviously performance is going to be a lot less. So what about performance then? Well, basically the 1490 is said to be about twice as fast as the RTX 3090 Ti, or two to four times faster with ray tracing and DLSS used. And the same thing could be said of the RTX 30, sorry, 4080 16 gigabyte model. It's said to be about twice as fast or two to four times faster than the 3080 Ti. So obviously that's quite a lot of performance. Um, I think it's fair to say that the RTX 40 series absolutely dwarfs the RTX 30 series. Long story short, it rough stomps it from a great height. But there were a couple of concerns I had. The first is that while we did have some benchmarks in the form of videos, there weren't a lot of direct comparisons. And I really wish that NVIDIA had laid on like its graphs and shown us, for example, Watchdog Legion and Cyberpunk and all of the other applications and we saw a myriad of different games, both RTX on versus, but that wasn't what happened. But in the official blog post, again, I'll leave a link to that in the video description. Well, things get quite interesting. They say specifically in the headline, up to four times faster, uh, in terms of up to four times uh, performance. And there are numerous games which are being shown off here. Resident Evil Village, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and The Division 2 show the 3090 Ti is actually faster than the 4080 12 gigabyte with the 16 gigabyte and 4090 being faster by quite a margin particularly the 4090 of course whereas warhammer and flight simulator are clear wins for lovelace next generation titles which include cyberpunk well that's where dlss 3 is being used there's not much i can say about this cyberpunk goes to almost 4.5 times faster than the 3090 Ti. So what does this mean? Well, it basically means that we still don't have enough performance information. Um, essentially, we are looking at owners of, let's say, a 3080 Ti, a 3090. You're probably not going to benefit that much for a 4080 12 gigabyte model. So if, for example, you're planning to sell your 3080 Ti for cheap, uh, you know, on eBay or whatever and spend a bit more cash, you're basically side grading. Yeah, it is considerably faster in next generation games, but obviously those are going to take a while to come to the market. On the other hand, if you're planning to get a 4090, then obviously you've got way higher specifications. So just in general, you're going to have way higher frame rates. So if you're upgrading from a 3090, for example, to a 4090, there's a big gap in performance. And if we're talking about next generation titles, well, it becomes kind of ridiculous. The other thing, of course, and uh, you know, I kind of already mentioned this briefly, the prices of the RTX 4080 series, they're a lot more expensive. Now, I think one of the reasons for this um, is that they don't want to kill the RTX 30 series pricing. And I think AMD are going to do much the same because of Narve 33 has basically, as I've reported multiple times, been postponed until next year. And that, of course, is going to basically be a replacement of the 6900 XT up to 6900 XT. So the 4060, 4070, those cards, they're going to be, well... At some point next year from NVIDIA. I had heard that the 4070 was going to launch this year. Apparently they postponed it. And as well as the 1390, sorry, 4090 Ti, heard that was going to be uh, possibly at this event, but more likely not. And obviously they've not done that. So they're holding back a crap ton of cards. I'm not surprised. I think AMD are going to do much the same thing. I don't think they're going to be releasing, like, Narve 32, I don't think has even gotten that far in production. So, none of this really surprised me, ultimately. Um, again, I'm missing a ton of things on the announcements, like NVIDIA Omniverse looks really cool. Uh, the ability to remaster games looks absolutely awesome. And I think content creators are going to have an absolute great time. My concerns, ultimately, with RTX 40 are not many. I think the architecture looks astounding. I think DLSS 3 is going to be amazing, assuming it works as advertised. I think that the pricing of RTX 4090 is about what I expected. I think that the 4080 series is a little more than I'd hoped for. Again, 999 US dollars, I think, was roughly what I was expecting the 16 gigabyte card to cost. Personally speaking, 
And again, it's your money. I'm not going to tell you guys what to do with it. I would personally not pre-order anything. And I would personally wait at the minimum for the reviews. And see how everything goes. The best case scenario is that you wait until RDNA 3. Even if you're an NVIDIA fan. Just to see what happens. Like... The other thing, of course, is if you did want to pick up an RTX 1490 Ti, you're going to have to wait. Um, so if you want the top-end SKU, ultimately, I think NVIDIA have done a pretty bang-up job with RTX 40. There's not really any disappointments to me. The power consumption, again, that's another reason I'm saying for you guys to wait until the reviews. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I think the next generation of graphics is going to be really cool. They kind of hinted path tracing a couple of times during the event, especially when it came to the Omniverse stuff. But I think it's a long way from actually being a thing in gaming. You know, I did a recent video on this. I think that the technologies are roughly there in RTX 40, but I don't think it's far enough along, especially with the developers themselves not having any experience. The other real pain in the ass, of course, is consoles just cannot run. I mean, you know what, to be honest, I'm about to say they can't really run path tracing. Dude, at this point, the consoles can barely run bloody, like, ray tracing. It's like, if you get ray trace reflections in a game as, like, a 30 FPS option in a console at this point, you're like, Wow, we, Gee whiz, thank you! I'm so lucky! Um, obviously, I'm being a bit of an asshole, but... You know... Like... The consoles can only do a certain amount, right? Um, you know, they're not as expensive as a graphics card, let alone, like, an entire PC. So considering they're two years old right now. Who knows what a pro console will do if it's ever bloody released, like sod knows. Uh, so yeah, my personal thoughts, I think RDNA 3 is going to be a very interesting architecture. NVIDIA have stated that they can get the RTX uh, 40 series up to 3 gigahertz in the lab, but how are they achieving that? I don't know. Is it utilizing the tiers of like, I don't know, like a dragon? Like, I don't know. Are they are they using pixie dust? How are they cooling it? Is it ran on the surface of the moon? Like, do they have a moon base? I don't know. No one really knows this stuff. Um, and obviously, things like power consumption and stuff has been a meme. I don't think. I think a lot of this has been a little overblown. With that said, again, no one really knows at this stage. Like, there's a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation. Nvidia are pushing the fact that the architecture is actually quite power efficient. But obviously, at the end of the day, if you have like a lot of shaders and they're kind of going brr you know the brr takes energy so um again just to repeat myself i'm going to be very interested to see how all of this shapes up i think the rtx 40 series looks really cool and i want to test one out i just i i just don't want you guys to like throw your money down until you know many of you have seen what rdna3 is capable of and I do wish NVIDIA had changed their approach a little bit with some additional graphs and performance. The demos they showed off were really cool, like Cyberpunk. They do look very impressive. Um, but again, we'll have to wait and see. I'm personally hyped. I think the future of graphics looks absolutely amazing. I think AMD, I think NVIDIA have done some really cool things. I'm sure RDNA 3 is going to be very competitive, and I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I just don't know how any of this is going to shape up. Which is going to be faster? Who knows? So again, we have had a few benchmarks which NVIDIA have shown us, and I think, if anything, we're still left with a ton of questions regarding the performance of the cards, how much they benefit, certain workloads, and so on. Ultimately, the RTX 40 series looks very, very impressive. The architecture itself is going to continue, of course, to evolve, and I'm sure titles will look really cool. Uh, Omniverse looks very very awesome i think for those who do, do a lot of modding and so on and just want to revitalize their games it could be really cool but again i'm going to say the same thing as i've said throughout the video a few times at this point um it's going to be very intriguing to see how all of this shapes up uh, especially given that we're still waiting for rdna3 but one thing is for certain i think pc gaming especially after christmas i suspect when things get a little calmer on the market i think pc gaming is going to be really cool and i think that uh, you know what a hypothetical rtx 4060 card 
or a 4070 or an equivalent AMD card, along with like a, you know, like a mid-range Ryzen processor or an Intel processor, you're going to have a crap ton of gaming performance. Like that thing's just going to rip through most games at 1440p at high frame rates, no problem. So I think that we're going to be entering a golden era of PC gaming, and I'm very excited. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, it's YouTube. You know what to do because it's YouTube. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.